The title of today's Brandon's blog is Canadian Income Tax Act Section 160, Bad Moves Lead to Huge Tax Debt. The Canadian Income Tax Act allows Canada Revenue Agency to have a variety of methods for collecting debts from businesses and from personal taxpayers. One option is to assess anyone who received money from the tax debtor without giving proper consideration for it. This applies both if the taxpayer owed tax when the money was paid out, or if the taxpayer becomes a tax debtor after the payment is made. This is what this Brandon's blog is about. We explain how Section 160 of the Canadian Income Tax Act works, and then describe a recent decision from the federal court in the case of Murphy versus the King. My name is Ira Smith, president of Ira Smith Trustee and Receiver Inc. Both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions you may have, either about this Brandon's blog or anything else at all. So shoot us a message, give us a phone call. We would love to speak with you. If an entrepreneur who is the major or sole shareholder of a company conducting business gave themselves a generous bonus, they may see the bonus clawed away by CRA if the business is assessed and owing taxes for the taxation year in which the bonus was paid out or any prior taxation year. The potential liability could be sizable depending on the amount of the transfer without due consideration having been paid. And that is what Section 160 of the Income Tax Act is all about. It becomes effective when a person or company has transferred properly, directly or indirectly, such as through a trust or any other indirect way, to anyone they're not dealing with at arm's length. And the party that makes the transfer owes income tax or is assessed at a later date to owe income tax for the year of the transfer or any prior year. And the person receiving the money could be totally innocent and not be aware that the taxpayer who made the transfer owes tax, but that is not a defense. It is irrelevant. Down in the blog, Brandon describes various examples of non-arm's length parties. And that is what the court case is about. It's about Mr. Murphy, who had his company pay out a dividend to him while the company owed CRA money. Interestingly enough, Mr. Murphy is a licensed insolvency trustee. He first objected to CRA's assessment and the assessment was upheld. He then took it to court and the lower court decided that Mr. Murphy received the property while the company was a tax debtor. Mr. Murphy tried to argue that he provided services to the company and the fair market value of the services was at least equal to the property he received. But the problem is the company transferred the money to Mr. Murphy, not as salary, but as dividends. And the court found that a shareholder receiving dividends from a company, the only reason they can receive it is because they are a shareholder. It is irrelevant that they may have provided services 
to the company, and this was their way of compensation in order to make it more tax effective. The court ruled the reason is irrelevant if it's a dividend, it's only because you own the shares. Brandon muses in the blog what would have been the case if Mr. Murphy received salary in return for the services, but that wasn't the case here. Mr. Murphy, not happy with the lower court decision, took it higher in federal court to appeal, but the federal court dismissed the appeal because they did not find anything wrong in the lower court's decision. And this is of special interest to every entrepreneur where their company remunerates them through dividends or a mix of salary and dividends. If their company owes tax or is later found to have owed tax, those dividends can be clawed back. And in general, any transfer of property from a tax debtor to a non-arm's length party where the non-arm's length party does not give fair market value consideration in return for that transfer of property will be liable to pay it to the government. Incidentally, if that non-arm's length party takes property and then transfers it to another person, that third person can also be chased by CRA, leading to various parties now having tax debt to CRA because of that initial transfer. So I hope you can read the entire Brandon's blog below because I know you will get value from it. Again, both Brandon Smith and myself are available to answer any questions you may have, either about this Brandon's blog or anything else at all. So shoot us a message, give us a phone call. We would love to speak with you.